Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Our nation was founded on a bedrock principle, that we are all created equal. The project of each generation is to bridge the meaning of those founding words with the realities of changing times. This morning, the Supreme Court recognized that the Constitution guarantees marriage equality. In doing so, they've reaffirmed that all Americans are entitled to the equal protection of the law. That all people should be treated equally, regardless of who they are or who they love. There's so much more work to be done to extend the full promise of America to every American. But today, we can say, in no uncertain terms, that we've made our union a little more perfect. Well, welcome back to the Savage Nation, and uh, welcome me back. I was off for a week, the longest vacation I've taken in 20 years on the radio. And I think it was God's hand that I took last week off because of the cataclysmic events in the world and decisions that were made. I needed time to reflect and reflect I did. And I spent the week, laugh if you will, doesn't matter to me if you think it's too weird. I spent the week... Reading mysticism, something I have, well, delved in all of my life. I never talk about it, but I've seen God's hand in places where people don't believe it should be or don't think it exists, especially in my own life when I was counted out and down. God pulled me back up from the bottom. And so I'm not one of these religious people who goes to a house of worship, but I'm definitely one of God's children. And God definitely looks over me personally. And I watch what happened last week. I see the insanity of the West magnified as through a thousand X glass, as exemplified by the uh, jerk in the White House. He's not really a jerk. He's a fanatic. One of the most fanatical lunatics in the history of the presidency, pushing America over the edge on a daily basis, lighting up the White House with the rainbow colors, which I found to be astonishing. I thought it was a nation for all of us. I thought it was the people's house, not just a small minority, a two percenter. But nevertheless, I see that here. And the same day, there are massacres all over Europe by Muslim fanatics. And I say to myself, what is this story that God's telling us on the planet today? We have Islamic maniacs shooting people to death with a machine gun in Tunisia, cutting it on on a fence in Paris. Attacks in Kuwait and Fox News did not cover it. I rarely get to watch Fox News because I'm too busy with my show, but I was away and I turned on uh, Madam uh, Washington, uh, Martha Washington, who apparently is the Martha Washington of the Republican Party. She didn't cover the massacres. I kept waiting for it. They were covering some guys in upstate New York who were in hiding like that was the biggest story on earth. So I said, okay, they're useless. They're useless. The only one I found of any utility over the weekend was Brett Beyer, who was in Jordan, covering the persecution and killing of Christians with the king of Jordan. I have to take my hat off to Brett Beyer. At least he's a journalist. He's not a fraud showman. But nevertheless, I ask myself in a bigger picture, what is the story here? The West is dancing this dance of death. The Muslims are on the warpath and nothing is being done to stop the Islamists as they murder and slaughter their way through the Middle East. And I say, it's God's hand. What do you mean it's God's hand? God wants them to rape, kill, and murder? Well, I don't know that he wants every person who's raped, killed, or tortured to be raped, killed, or tortured. But in the bigger scheme of things, they are a counterpoint to the madness of the West. It's God's balance. And from the mystical tradition, what occurs in the other world above us occurs on this world in the lower world. There are two worlds, at least. Two worlds. And what occurs here on this earth is a reflection of what's going on above us, perhaps in another dimension. And so we see in this country the dance of death, and we see from the Islamists the killings, the murders, the rapes, and Obama does nothing about them. I say to myself, okay, there's a story here. It's a mystical story. 
And then someone sends me an email about Edgar Allan Poe and his story, The Mask of the Red Death, 1842. And I said, holy God. I said, oh my God, Edgar Allan Poe was writing about Obama. The Red Death had long devastated the country. No pestilence had ever been so fatal or so hideous. Blood was its avatar and its seal. There were sharp pains and sudden dizziness and then profuse bleeding at the pores. The scarlet stains upon the body and especially upon the face of the victim were the pest ban which shut him out from the aid and from the sympathy of his fellow men and the whole seizure, progress, and termination of the disease were the incidents of half an hour. But the Prince Prospero was happy and dauntless and sagacious. With his dominions, when his dominions were half depopulated, he summoned to his presence a thousand hale and light-hearted friends from among the knights and dames of his court, and with these retired to the deep seclusion of one of his castellated abbeys. This was an extensive and magnificent structure, the creation of the prince's own eccentric yet august taste. A strong and lofty wall girdled it in. The wall had gates of iron. The courtiers, having entered, brought furnaces and messy hammer, massy hammers and welded the bolts. They resolved to leave means neither of ingress or egress to the sudden impulses of despair or frenzy from within. With such precautions, the courtiers might bid defiance to contagion. The external world could take care of itself. In the meantime, it was folly to grieve or to think. The prince had provided all the appliances of pleasure. There were buffoons, there were improvisatory, there were ballet dancers, there were musicians, there was beauty, there was wine. All these insecurity were within. Without was the Red Death. If that does not describe the sorority and the little lighthearted fraternity around Obama, I'd like to know what does. There were buffoons, there were improvisatory, there were ballet dancers, there were musicians, there was beauty, there was wine. All these insecurity were within the walls. Without was the Red Death. Well, you know how this ends, don't you? It was toward the close of the fifth or sixth months of his seclusion, and while the pestilence raged most furiously abroad, that Prince Prospero entertained his thousand friends at a masked ball of the most unusual magnificence. Oh, did he entertain him? And I'm not going to read the entire a story, The Mask of the Red Death by Poe, 1842. But I will tell you how it ends. You want to know how it ends? You know how it ends, don't, don't you? See, Obama thinks that all the troubles of the world can be pushed away because he owns NBC, which just attacked Donald Trump for speaking the truth. He owns ABC, he owns CBS, he owns CNN, he owns Fox News to about a 90th percentile. He has no opposition whatsoever except the churches and a few voices in the wilderness. And the prince locks himself in behind closed walls with his thousand friends, party on party on party on party. And he doesn't even think about the Christians who are being slaughtered. He doesn't think about the Azidi girls who are being raped and sold into slavery. He talks about slavery 150 years ago while slavery is going on right now and he does nothing. Doesn't lift a finger to the ongoing slavery. And so I say to myself, there's a story here that's both secular and religious. At least that's how I saw it. And it ends badly. It ends very badly for all of us. And it ends like this. And now is acknowledged the presence of the Red Death. He had come like a thief in the night. And one by one dropped the revelers in the blood bedewed halls of their revel. And died each in this, the despairing posture of his fall. And the life of the ebony clock went out with that of the last of the gay. And the flames of the tripods expired. And darkness and decay in the Red Death held illimitable dominion over all. Let's hope this despairing image of the plague in that time is just a metaphor for this maddening prince in the White House who has created havoc around the globe. He has created havoc and he lights the White House in the rainbow colors and does nothing to stop the rapes and the murders, doesn't even mention them. And his little friends like Jake Tapperhead his little friends at ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, and Fox News barely mention the plague of murder, rape, kidnapping, slavery being enacted by the Islamists who continue their march, their march, their march, their march. And that, my friends, is the monologue opening to the Savage Nation as I return today from a hiatus where I spent some time doing almost nothing. For me to do nothing is very, very hard. 
But I found out that I enjoyed doing nothing because in doing nothing, I did an awful lot. I was able to absorb. I was able to think. And here I am. I'm back. And the phone number here is 855-407-282. I want to say one other thing on a pragmatic note on this vacation that I took. A lot of observations. Some of them are useful and some are not. Some can be mentioned. Some are worth something. Some are not. When I began in radio 21 years ago, I was on a local station, KSFO in San Francisco. I had a very successful consulting career, which took me around the country and sometimes around the world for a week at a time. And I told the station manager, I'll take your offer of full-time work under one condition. I'll do radio four or five weeks, and then I'm going to take off a week virtually every six weeks. I have to for my other profession. Well, he said to me, you can't do that because your audience will not be there for you when you come back. The audience is skittish, and they won't follow you. I said, that's the terms. I can't do it any other way. I'm not willing to give up the other career. Well, guess what? I did it for a year that way, and my ratings continued to rise. And I learned something from that, which is that if people believe in you and they like you, they'll find you. They'll wait for you. And I intend to take a lot more time off so I have more lasting power through these troubled times for myself and for you right here on the Savage Nation. It's the only way I can navigate through this Red Sea with you and for you, which is to take more time to meditate on the meaning of it all. Am I pessimistic? Are these the end of times? Let me tell you something. Many of you Christians believe these are the end times. I've got good news for you. The minute I return right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. I wish that you caught the opening to the show because I have to tell you, this show is about continuity. It's not broken up. And if you miss the opening, the rest of the show is going to be incomplete. So I suggest you try to get it on YouTube because I guarantee you it's going to be one of my most famous YouTubes, of which there are hundreds. We're living through strange times. The dance of death in the West, the actualities of death from the Islamists. Meanwhile, the prince entertains himself with a thousand... Uh, sycophants in the White House partying on, locking himself behind closed walls as though the Islamist hand will not touch him. He thinks he's protected from this new plague. Let me explain something to you in my studies over the last week. I'll repeat what I learned, and it's not novel, nor is it original. We're facing a phenomenon that the West has not known since the wars of religion in the 16th and 17th century. Religious wars. When they ended in one place, they began in another. And they lasted for over 100 years. We have the same factors present right now. Did you hear me? We have religious wars right now. The, the Muslims are on the war path. And they are against everyone else. They're against Muslims who are not as fanatical as them. They think they're going to take us back to a pristine time in human history which is such rubbish, it's beyond belief. When you consider they live like pigs after capturing eight-year-old girls and raping them and then say the Quran says it's okay. Don't tell me they're pure. They're not pure. They're phony killers, Nazis. Nazis wearing headscarves and quoting the Quran do not make them not Nazis. The atrocities are still atrocities. It's not a purity they're going to drag us back to. It's a barbarism the world has not seen in 1,200 years. It's a revolution that's going on and we have a man in the White House who denies its existence but make no mistake about it whether he denies it or accepts it it's go it's ongoing and as a brilliant man named Jonathan Sachs I think he was once the chief rabbi of England said in a recent speech there is a difference between a starfish and a spider a decapitated spider dies but a starfish can regenerate itself from a single amputated leg Radical political Islam is a starfish, not a spider. And though Al-Qaeda and ISIS may be defeated, they will come back in other guises under other names. Why you would bring in Muslims who are not vetted into a nation at this time without vetting them down to their last strand of DNA is beyond me. 
because many of them will radicalize if they're not radical before they get here. Only an insane prince would do this to us. But of course, it's not that he's so insane. He's stoned on the doxy of the progressive left. They're drunk on their progressivism. They think that they're going to enter a liberal utopia by continuing their march against all values, traditional and conservative. This is, of course, how past civilizations declined. Cut off, narcissists cut off, involved only in me, 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 and pleasure-seeking, and they can't defend themselves at the end against the mask of the Red Death. They keep on partying. They keep on partying. So where does that leave us, we the people? It leaves us without a government. It's not a government at all. It's not a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. It's a government of power and force over all of us, not for all of us. It's a government of the lobbyists, by the lobbyists, and for the lobbyists. There were two Supreme Court rulings today, which are pretty interesting. They threw a bone to the fiscal conservatives, these wonderful, wonderful liberals on the Supreme Court, threw us a bone today, and they said, okay, the EPA overstepped, you can keep burning coal. So, oh, well, gave us gay marriage, Obamacare last week. Oh, but we can still burn coal this week, see? They said, okay, we're not that bad. Then they said the lethal injections that are being used, they're, they're legal. They can continue to use them. Of course, the liberal lawyers haven't stopped appealing their death sentences for 30 years at the cost of who knows how many millions to keep these vermin alive on death row. But So they threw two bones at the conservatives, traditionalists, patriots, any way you want to put it in America. Oh, don't worry about the gay marriage thing. Don't worry about the uh, Obamacare. We're going to give you the coal, and you're getting the needle. See? They know how to play the game. They're good politicians. Don't think because they wear black robes. Don't think because they wear black robes that they're justices. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Let's hear some music. Bumper music, please. I want to hear it. I need to hear da, 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 da. Not your voice. All right. See, I get triggered. My neurons get fired when I hear the breaker music to my show because it's ingrained in me by now. And I got to go back again to saying to you that as the West dies and falls into deeper degeneracy, if you want to call it that, I don't know what else to call it. Pardon me. It's how I was raised. Uh, I haven't been re-educated. As we sink further and further into debauchery and lose all of our connection to reality, the Islamists continue to march on. And so I say to you, there's some mystical element going on here. There's a balance here. There's a balance. There's God's hand involved in all of it. So I didn't come back with what I wanted to last time, which was about many Christians think these are signs of end times. Call a Mystical Jewish rabbi. Not all rabbis are mystical. Most of them are not. Most of them are just schmendricks. Most rabbis that I've met, the liberal kind, are basically comedians who couldn't get a job in a comedy club. My, my experience, they think their job as a rabbi is to tell jokes on Friday night and sell bagels and locks on the side or hummus now, today, whatever they sell, and not, not even reference God because it's an embarrassment to the congregation. That's a reformed temple today. So... I called a uh, mystical rabbi, and I said to him, you know, many Christians think that these are end times. He immediately said no to the Jewish mind. These are the beginning times. We don't see it at the end of times. He said, we see mystically these are the beginning of times. This is God's way of telling us there's a new beginning emerging, that people will awaken to what's going on, and it will be a new beginning for man on earth. So I said, that's interesting. I'm, I'm going to learn more from him perhaps next weekend. They're sending down a real heavyweight from somewhere to meet with me because I want to talk about this. It's not like we sit with some crystal ball or anything, but I want to hear what they have to say from their point of view. How do they live in a time like this? Now that these justices declared that homosexual marriage is a fundamental right, and they say that anyone objects is a bigot, which demeans the human dignity of homosexual citizens, what does that mean for people of faith? How is that going to affect religious Americans? How will that affect houses of worship? Should radical gays threaten lawsuits when they're denied weddings? And that would be uh, mosques, churches, synagogues, Mormon temples. 
What will the mosque do when a gay couple tries them? They probably won't try them because they know they're too hard to deal with. They'll go for the Catholic Church. They've already been victorious there. What about religious colleges, adoption agencies, schools, healthcare facilities, where deeply held religious beliefs conflict with the so-called rights that these nine and black robes granted to homosexual couples? Tell me what will happen. We don't know what's going to happen. I think I know what's going to happen. I know pretty much what's going to happen, especially if we get a radical Democrat president like Hillary Clinton. I know just what's going to happen. You can look to China, where China cooperates with patriotic churches that are willing to work with its Communist Party and persecutes underground churches such as evangelical and Catholic churches that insist on their independence and the word of God. I know what's going to happen here. In Turkey, there's a two-tiered system of religion. The government funds Islamic education, builds new mosques with government funds, and restricts the activities of Christians. I know what's coming to America. This is government at its worst. The government at its worst. The Supreme Court has decisively rejected the U.S. Constitution and thrown our government into the business of mac managing our relationship with God, those of us who still believe in God. That's the opinion of most people of faith, not just mine. And we are now, on the other hand, facing a war, a religious war, as I said to you earlier, not known since the wars of religion in the 16th and 17th century. And they ended in a 100 years later, where these religious wars began in one place, they began in another, much like the pestilence that we see now in Tunisia the other day. You didn't even see that on Fox News. Couldn't find it. Martha Washington was busy talking about everything but that. She wouldn't touch, wouldn't touch it. To Fox News, the Islamist issue is, caught, is on a cordon sanitaire. Never mention it. They're much like Obama with, with that. And so it's a dangerous time. I kept trying to find pictures of the guy executing people on a beach with a machine gun. I couldn't believe this. And by the way, remember after that terrible tragedy in South Carolina when that lunatic coward shot up those black people and Obama had the audacity of lies to get up there and say, this happens only in America, it doesn't happen in Europe? Duh. Duh. He forgot about the uh, Hebdo massacre where Jews and others were assassinated by Muslim fanatics. It happened there and they have gun control. It didn't happen in Tunisia last week where they have severe gun control. How'd that happen, Mr. Obama? I guess the sorority didn't report on that to you. You were too busy partying on at the ball. Did you even know what happened in Tunisia, Mr. Obama? Or were you busy looking at the presents that your wife brought back from her shopping trip to Italy? Mr. Obama. Do you know what's going on in the Middle East, Mr. Obama? Do you know about eight-year-old girls who are being kidnapped because they're not Muslims and sold off as slaves, Mr. Obama? Do you know that's even happening? Or are you planning another party tonight in the White House or another golfing trip? After all, it is summer. You've worked very hard. You've done your, your control is very good. You had a trifecta last week, Mr. Obama. 855-407-282. I have some great callers. I may as well get to them. Let's start on line one, MAL. Michael, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Yes, Michael. The last time we spoke, I mentioned to you... Oh, not you again. You're the religious fanatic. Okay, make your point. Go ahead. I'm, that, uh, I'm a follower of Chabad, and I'm sure that the rabbi... Most people don't know what Chabad is. They don't know what Chabad is. It sounds like a, like a bagel. What is Chabad? Chabad is a Hasidic movement that started... About 250 years ago. All right, fine. Let's not have a lecture. Fine. It's a religious organization, Jewish, and you're saying gay marriage is a good thing. Why? Because it means that we've now sunk. You've used that term, sunk. You don't know how, uh, how apt it is. We've now sunk into what's called the 49th level of spiritual defilement. That's called the Memtes Sharitumma. What that means is when we sunk that low at the first time of the redemption from Egypt, there was almost nothing left of us because we were so assimilated into the decadence of Egyptian culture where they practiced every kind of degeneracy ever known to man. And if God had waited one more minute, there would be no Jewish people to take out. We are told that just like it was at the first redemption, it's going to be at the time of the second 
and final redemption. When the rabbi explained to you that we're not ending a world, we're starting a new world, that's precisely what we're doing. So in order for this to happen, we have to sink to the bottom. And that's why we rejoice when we learn about how the degenerates have now taken over the West. Because after all... Oh, wait, okay, so I get your point. So now what happens next? What happens next is that we will, will be seeing Mashiach, who will save us from all of this. He's going to... Right, yeah, okay, the Messiah is coming back. Uh, I get it. Is he blonde and blue-eyed? Does he have blonde... What does he look like? He looks, he's, he looks exactly like because he is the Lubavitcher Rebbe. We have uh, a, I don't want to hear... Okay, that, that's fanaticism. I'm not going to accept it. It's that simple. He was a chemist by training, by the way. He was not the, he was not the Messiah. So, uh, I, okay, up to a certain point, I believe in the fable. And then the fable stops having any meaning for me when I start hearing about a, a messiah. I don't happen to believe in a messiah. You want my answer to that? Michael, you want to hear my answer to where the messiah is? So, you're still or are you gone? Are you still there? You want to hear my belief as to where the messiah is? Well, you can tell me where you believe us. I'll tell you the facts. Go ahead. Okay, well, okay, you're so bigoted because you believe you only know the truth. This is what I have. This is the problem I have with religious people. It's why I am not religious. It's because you think everyone else is an idiot and only you know the truth. It's why I reject religion. It's why I'm a spiritual man, not a religious man. But let me finish on this point. I believe the Messiah exists in all of us. You know, the kingdom of God is within, but the Messiah is within all of us, and we can be messianic unto ourselves and unto others. That's the whole message of the Messiah. You guys got it mixed up and think it's in a human form. Thanks for the call. 855-407-282. All of us have a Messiah within all of us. I know this is offensive to Orthodox Jews and to Christians who believe Jesus is the Messiah who will come back. I'm sorry, I don't ascribe to it. There are other religious beliefs on the planet. I have a different view of the world, and that's the way I am. And I believe God's hand is guiding me and guiding my survival on this earth. I don't believe I'd be on the radio were it not for God. I'm going to talk about God then. You want me to talk about God? Since I'm talking about mysticism, I'll tell it to you over and over again. My career ended before it began. And then it took off like a rocket. And then I was put through a trial and tribulation with one of the worst people on the planet. Went on for years, tur tortured, persecuted, threatened. Day in and day out, no one knew what I was living with. Nobody knew what I lived with. Another man would have left and said, enough is enough. I don't need this garbage. But I had a bigger mission. I ignored the evil that was doing it to me. And then when I thought the career was over, the Red Sea parted for me. And the door and the sea of cumulus opened to me overnight out of nowhere. And I had to walk on hot coals for a year. You don't know that either. I was given a night show. You remember my night show? You know how hard that was for me, that adjustment? adjustment? It was walking on hot coals. I didn't think I could survive it. It threw my life upside down, but I wanted to do it. I had to do it. It was a mission. And I waited and waited and waited for what I have now, which are the biggest stations in the country during drive time, on the East Coast, reaching more people than uh, I ever reached in my life with my simple message. And I believe that there's a, a reason for it. And the reason is for me and you to talk on a daily basis. And that's the thing I'm trying to tell you. There's some kind of thing going on here that goes beyond humanity and just human beings. So there it is. Now, at some point today, I'm probably going to shift gears and tell you about Beverly Hills in Los Angeles and my social observations. I'm going to tell you about that because I enjoy going to Los Angeles. I enjoy it for a number of reasons. I think it's the most dynamic city in the country. And I find that being in Los Angeles is enlightening and being in San Francisco is like being in a death zone. San Francisco is about the salt, most soulless city on the planet. The meanest place on earth is San Francisco with false smiles and knives behind their back and their hand. Uh, I find L.A. very much like the New York that I left behind. People are much more abrupt and friendly in the sense of telling you what they think. Maybe it's the entertainment business. Everyone talks. They're a clerk in a, in a, in a supermarket can get into a conversation. Here in San Francisco, they can't talk. They're tongue-tied. If you talk to a stranger in San Francisco, they almost call the police. They don't know what you they think you're assaulting them. So that's that. Here I am. Mystical Mike. Here we are. Let's go to a caller. What about Greece? What about Puerto Rico? What about gay marriage? Uh, what about the two Supreme Court rulings today that you missed that I told you about? 
You heard about them? They gave us the needle and they gave us the coal. They threw it at us. They said, oh, good for you. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, you don't like the gay marriage thing. I tell you what, you right wing nuts. We're going to give you. You could have all the coal you want. And if that's not good enough for you to show that we're not that bad, we're going to throw in the needle. You're allowed to execute people with that concoction that the liberal fanatics say is, is cruel and unusual punishment. Go ahead. Take a walk. Move on. Forget the gay marriage already. The politicians in black robes, the four, the, the libs, the five libs. Of course, there's a four, four. And then there's one split guy who was appointed by Ronald Reagan, the great, the great hero. Kennedy, the, the great hero, Ronald Reagan, the gene, did, could do no wrong. What's wrong with people? They put Ronald Reagan on a, on a pedestal. I don't understand it. How did they come to, un, to believe that Ronald Reagan is, was God, chosen by God to be president? Where did they come up with that rubbish? I mean, he, did, he used to do 20 Mule Team Borax. I remember that show as a kid. Nice actor. A reasonably decent president. Good speaker. Good writer. He gave us Justice Kennedy along with Edwin Meese and the little lawyers who worked for Edwin Meese, who now pose as talk show hosts. They used to work as bull weevils inside the uh, Justice Department, gave us uh, Kennedy, and I was supposed to believe now that they're really conservative. They know who he was. Oh, he lied. He didn't lie. He always was what he is. The whole thing is a game. It's all a charade. A one-party system, all ganged up against the people. It's that simple. You know, there was a Chinese proverb from the 1300s, I believe, which said... When the people fear the government, there is a dictatorship. And when the government fears the people, there is democracy. Tell me what you have right now. You think this government fears you with this Prince Igor in the White House? The greatest charade artist to have ever come along? Hmm? Who fears who? We don't have a democracy. We have an autocratic administration that's borderline fascistic right now, spying on everyone, threatening everyone, suing everyone, beating everyone, not into a plowshare, but into dust. And so we have a dictatorship and people know it. The government has never been more hated in this country than it is right now. You wouldn't know it because of the ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, MSNBC uh, locksteppers, and of course the government jesters, who I need not mention by name. The haha -ha people, the haha -ha boys. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. All right, so I try to tell you I took a week off. I try to relax, and what I did was spend time studying mysticism. That's, oh, big deal. Yeah, oh, big deal for me it was. And I saw that the Friday was astounding to me. Tunisia, Muslim, machine gun slaughters, non-Muslims on a beach. Anyone who was Tunisian, he didn't kill, by the way. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Missed it in the news. Didn't make it to uh, Jeff Zucker's NBC. Didn't make it to uh, Mr. Pill over at uh, NBC. They didn't want to cover that because it was an inconvenient truth for the administration. Uh, that Islamists slaughtered people on a beach. Was it inconvenient for Jeff Zucker that um, a Muslim cut the head off of a factory owner and put his head on a gate in Paris? Zucker didn't want to cover that because it would have made Obama very unhappy. Obama was having a party at the White House for his thousand, his thousand uh, ac acolytes. He had the gates locked. They had the the the, the doors were were barricaded, surrounded by security, and they were partying on. They don't want to know about what's going on in Paris or, or uh, Tunisia. Why should he care about the rapes and the murders, the kidnapping of eight-year-old girls? Join the Savage Nation. Well, that, where that came from, I don't know, but I just heard. <laughs> by the way, the show has moved to a new studio today, so if there are minor glitches here and there, they're still ironing it out. They did a great job moving my studio over the weekend from one location in Dallas where the show emanates to another getting hit with music they're still trying to work out the timing they've gone from an analog to a digital board very complicated running a board in a radio station more on michael's mystical week when i return right here on the savage nation warning the savage nation contains adult language adult content 
psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. So, Mystical Mike is back from a week off, just looking at the sky and asking God some questions and getting some answers. And Friday, the world comes tumbling down. Islamist opens up with a machine gun. Another one cuts the head off a factory owner in France. No reportage, though, hardly any. Can't find it on Martha Washington's show. She was all happy about covering the whole uh, rainbow thing. And... Um, yeah, I mean, what's this about? How does the people? How do the people live with this? How do they handle it? What do you mean? They're partying on here, dancing, 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 dancing. Meanwhile, the world is on fire because of Obama. He set the world on fire. Unleashed the Islamists by not controlling them, by precipitously removing troops from Iraq. He permitted Saddam Hussein's ex-military chiefs to go on a rampage. That's it in a nutshell. If you don't know what's going on. These are the Sunni madmen who were, uh, were working for Saddam Hussein in, the, uh, pr in his Praetorian Guard, Re better known as the Revolutionary Guard. That's who's running this military right now called ISIS, along with the lunatics from around the world, the inbreeds, the uh, people who are drugged out of their minds, that kind, the religious fanatics who think they're going to bring back a purity when they're going to just bring back Hitler. That's what they're doing anyway. And meanwhile, today we wake up in Greece, 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 Greece. We know Greece was a basket case. We know Ireland's a basket case. We know Portugal's a basket case. We know Spain is a basket case. We know America's not too far behind. We all know it's funny money. We all know Obama's printing it as fast as the uh, paper can be cut down from the trees in order to fund the welfare state. And then we read that Puerto Rico says they can't pay their debt. You look into the Puerto Rico thing, your hair will stand up. 60% of Puerto Ricans in Puerto Rico are on government assistance. 20% of the GDP is medical care. You tell me there's no, no crime there? The whole medical system is a criminal uh, operation. You think Obamacare is not going to be riddled with a criminal enterprise? It's all a criminal enterprise from top to bottom. A $30 aspirin, where do you think the money goes? But anyway, with the ambulances, who do you think owns the ambulance companies? <laughs> so 20% of the GDP in Puerto Rico is, is Medicare, is, uh, is medical. 60% of them are on welfare. So no one they're not going to pay their debt. So I send this thing about Puerto Rico to my good friend Craig Smith, who's been a sponsor of my show from the beginning with Swiss America, as you well know. And he says, Greece is first to collapse and leave the EU. Second on the list of international debt crises is Puerto Rico. He said, there could be a cascade of Portugal, Italy, Ireland, and Spain to follow. The debt is far too high, and the chickens have finally come home to roost. Each of the last three books Swiss America has offered on your show warned against all of this. I said, wow, I'm glad I bought gold. I hope my listeners hedge their bets and buy some. You know, each of them buy a little gold, for God's sakes. They got to be nuts not to. You got to be crazy. What's going to happen if they close your ATMs? What would you do if you woke up one day and your ATM was closed? How would you live? What would you live on? The Dow plunged 300 points today. Why, why did Greece collapse? Because they were living on borrowed money. They, they were lazy bums. They didn't want to work. They wanted to walk around, go on vacations to, to Italy, or go to Italy and France, San Francisco, sit and drink Chardonnay in a cafe on a government dole, 10 week vacations, maternity care, fraternity care, paternity care, whatever. Government pays for it. Government pays for it. Government pays for it. So, what Obama is doing here is bringing about the socialism of Europe to America. And we're not too far behind all of them. We all know that. Everyone knows that. All of the so-called experts who did this to are telling us it's going to happen. It's like the intelligence community. I love that. All the intelligence communities are saying, oh, we're going to have an attack likely in a high level of, high level of uh, fear for July 4th. All the geniuses, CIA, DEI, AIA, ABC, NBC, DEA, DHS, MSNBC, all one and the same. Oh, high likelihood of a terrorist attack. Well, why don't you preemptively arrest the Islamists you've been following since 2005, doofus? What, you got to follow due process until someone's dead? Don't give me that crap. You're like the firemen who want fires to start to justify the firehouse budget, is how I see it.
So you know you're not going to be touched. You're armed to the teeth with machine guns and armored personnel carriers, so you're not afraid of them. Let a few of us go down in flames. You can justify a bigger budget for more intelligence doofuses. Big likelihood of an attack July 4th. Oh, yeah, Dianne Feinstein, another great genius. Senate Intelligence Committee, that's a, a laugh. How'd she inveigle her way onto that? Well, how and why? Simple, follow the money. If you're on the Intelligence Committee, you got all the intelligence about where the contracts are. <laughs> Not a laughing matter, but that's how it works in Rome. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. And as Rome collapses, you see how ancient Rome collapsed. You had people like her on committees that were supposed to protect you, who was like pigs sticking their snout into the, the treasury, in my opinion. Sticking their snout into the public treasury. All of them. Look at, and you know the biggest disgrace of all, well, we know that. Well, we talk about John Boehner. It's going to become a noun. Instead of a, a name being a, like, I'm sorry, being a, a verb, sorry. His name's going to become a verb for something, Boehner. You're going to say, oh, <laughs> yeah, well, I have to figure that one out. All the different uh, forms of Boehner. Could you imagine because he became a stooge of Obama? Obama let him ride in Air Force One. Did you see that picture on Drudge over the weekend? Astounding where he morphed the two faces, Boehner and Obama, into one face. And the little boy Boehner was given a ride on Air Force One. Did you see that? Could you believe this story? This guy is such a, an embarrassment to the human race. The drunk, I called him a drunk, clink, it didn't matter. Stabbed America in the back, stabbed the country in the back, gutted the Statue of Liberty. Unbelievable to me. Went along with Obama on everything, and Obama rewarded him. The prince took him on Air Force One, and the little boy Obama was given a certificate, which he held up in the air, showing that he rode on Air Force One. Could you believe this? That this is what we have as the so-called opposition? This is how far the country has fallen? Well, am I surprised? No. When I began a radio in 94, I said we have a one-party system. Oligarchs, Democrats or Republicans. One party, three-card Monty with no P under the shells. That's all. It's all a game. Shuck and a jive. Don't tell me about 2016. It's over. There's no need for the election. It's all a game. No one can win. It's a rigged machine. It's like going to Las Vegas and think you're going to come home rich. Yeah, right. Go elect a Republican. For what reason? Tell me the reason to elect a Republican for any reason whatsoever. All right, I get it. Oh, uh, let's see. Lower taxes and you can, you can burn coal and use uh, an injection on uh, yeah, death row. Okay, I got it. Okay. And what else are they going to do for you? Social issues? Yeah, right. Social issues, Republicans, are you joking? Well, fiscal matters, or fiscal Republicans. Fiscal Republicans? Remember what George Bush did to you in the last three months of his regime? How he jacked, he, he jacked down the entire economy. He jackhammered the economy. He gave us Obama. You think they're not going to do it again? Do you think someone's going to lose money if this economy crashes? You're telling me people who made billions last time are not going to make billions again this time? You think George Soros is on the sidelines in Greece? Are you kidding me? That guy's trading money faster than the guys who traded money in the back of the temple when Jesus said, throw the money changes out of the temple. Banks shut until Thursday. Social unrest. Dow plunges 300. PM asks for patience. Government official says we're going to default tomorrow. World defenseless against next financial crisis. Those are the headlines on the top of Drudge. You don't need to go anywhere else, truthfully. Everyone knows that. Everyone of brain power goes to the Drudge. <laughs> you don't know, read anything else. I know people, they turn, they just look at that, then they turn the news off. There's nothing else. To, there's a picture of Trump. Uh, NBC now gave him a, a knife in the back. Oh, I hope he gets even with the Zucker. I really do. NBC Universal cuts ties with Donald Trump. I hope there's a contract and he can hang them out to dry. NBC Universal, under pressure from an array of Hispanic groups, is severing its business ties to presidential candidate Donald Trump because he said the truth. He does nothing with dignity. The country is being overrun by illegal aliens, many of whom are criminals. We know that there's a drug corridor running right out of Mexico into America. There was a whole report on it last night on MSN, on excuse me, on CNBC. It's no mystery. So why shouldn't Trump speak the truth when he's speaking the truth? So what happened is NBC said we're cutting all ties with you. The fascists at NBC. Trump's opinions do not represent those of NBC, blah, 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 blah. I believe that Trump should sue them if he has a contract. He should break them over his knee. I'm sorry. I am sorry for these fascists at the networks to not permit freedom of speech is exactly what they've been doing anyway all these years. When have you last heard your viewpoint represented on NBC? Huh? Now, I realize he may not become president because he's never been a community organizer. 
and he probably never read Alinsky. He may have had Alinsky as an, as, a, as an accountant when he was young, one of Alinsky's cousins, but I don't think he's ever read Alinsky, so he has no organizing experience in the community level. Stop the coming civil war, huh? <laughs> Who wrote that? Raise your hand if you bought the book, Stop the Coming Civil War. Raise your other hand if you bought the book, Countdown to Mecca. Raise your hand if you know who wrote those books. Obama's engaged in a civil war from the day he began. Who told you that this guy was conducting a civil war against every institution you believed in? Don't stop talking about it. Don't be intimidated by him. This man is trying to burn the country down. Why? The insane left will not be satisfied until you're absolutely powerless. And where's the illegal immigrant in all of this? They all work hard and pay taxes. Really? What taxes? What taxes have they paid? Mexico is home to the world's largest drug cartel. We're the largest customer. Trump said so. He had the nerve to say so. So here we are. We're in a war right now. We're in a war right now, and we have a mob running America. They want absolute control of everyone's f speech. We have the lying networks with Brian, uh, whatever his name, I forget his last name. What was his last name? Brian the Liar? Bri Lion Brian. What's his last name? Williams. Let's name him Lion Brian. We're not calling him Brian Williams anymore. His name is Lion Brian. I just made it up. And anyone who agrees with Donald Trump or supports free speech is now attacked by Lion Bryan's cohorts, like Jeff Zucker, the sweaty vermin behind it all, the sweaty fat pig behind NBC, the sweaty fat pig who should be on a seltzer truck. The only thing Jeff Zucker would be good for him, I they would be running a seltzer route in Brooklyn. Now he's running NBC. Tax. I hope Trump fights back and wins. I hope he runs. I really hope he runs. Remember he was on my show a week before I left? And I asked them point blank. Remember the first question? I didn't mince words. I said, look, Donald, many people fear you're running as a stealth third-party candidate to undercut whatever Republican chances may be, but not that it matters anymore, uh, to, to elect Hillary. Remember he paused for about 40, 50 seconds, and you didn't think you were going to get an answer? Raise your hand if you remember that. Thank you. Thank you in the back of the room. I let him run out. I let him run out like the great whale he is. And I didn't say answer the question. I didn't do that. I'm not a gotcha guy. And the Donald came back and said, I guarantee you, Michael Savage, I'm not running on a third party ticket. I'm running as a Republican. I'm a lifetime Republican. I'm not out to split the ticket. You heard it. I made news on this. He made news on this show, but no one reported it because I'm not a member of the Rush cartel. If Rush had burped, uh, it would have been on five different websites the next morning with a handy cam inside his belly button uh, showing that the great man said so. But nevertheless, OK, that's the world I live in. It's a, it's a salmon swimming upstream every day on the Savage Nation. I try to spawn the truth by swimming up waterfalls. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from, SwissAmerica.com. <laughs> man like me should live a thousand years. Unfortunately, no man has lived a thousand years, but that's a great line from Zorba the Greek. I always loved it. What a great line. Remember when Zorba's old and dying and he goes to the window after making love to a woman and he turns from the window and says, a man like me should live a thousand years. That was such a great line. Katsanzakis, you talk about Greek writing, my God. What a great story that is. Anthony Quinn did a superb job. This, just in from a devout Christian to Michael Savage saying, Michael, you're not explaining what Christians mean when they think it's end times. Christians believe these are the beginning of birth pains and that God's kingdom is to come. We don't believe the world is anywhere near the end, but that we are nearing the beginning of a thousand years of peace and God's kingdom on earth. It's identical to the Jewish vision. The, you know, when we say America is built on the Judeo-Christian tradition, there's a lot of meaning in that. It's not just a catchphrase. So we learn from the Orthodox Jews that they too believe we're at the beginning of something beautiful because of the end of the time, the end of the cycle in America of decency, that we're falling into this horrendous degeneracy, this horrendous debauchery, 
we think. And we think it's all over, but it's just the beginning. The Christians see it the same way. That's it. So I, I'm optimistic. I, I see optimism. I don't see the end of the world. And again, you know, here's the thing about traveling. Oh, first of all, I got to read something from Donald Trump. It just came out a minute ago. As I was speaking, remember I called him Lion Brian Williams? I gave him a new name. We don't say Brian Williams around here. We say Lion Brian. Think of the bald Jeff Zucker who runs NBC. Think of Pill Griffin who works for him. They're all one in the same cadre of individuals. So they attack Trump. They sever relationships with Trump. And the billionaire businessman fires back and he says... He says this. He says, Mr. Trump stands by his statements on illegal immigration, which are accurate. NBC is weak and like everybody else is trying to be politically correct. That is why our country's in serious trouble. Listen to this. Trump goes on. We must have strong borders and not let illegal immigrants enter the United States. As has been stated continuously in the press, people are pouring across our borders unabated. Public reports routinely state great amounts of crime are being committed by illegal immigrants. This must be stopped and it must be stopped now, says Trump. Long ago, I told NBC that I would not be doing The Apprentice because I'm running for president in order to make our country great again. So they, see, they faked it. He said he wasn't going to do it, so they turned it around. The weaklings, Zucker and, and Pill Griffin, the two little <coughs> yucca pucks, make believe they severed with him, those two phonies. And he goes on, and he says he's going to sue them. They will stand behind lying Brian Williams, but they won't stand behind people that tell it like it is, as unpleasant as that may be. Thank you, Donald Trump. Sue them for everything they're worth. Sue them for everything they're worth. If you have a contract, go for it. I think they've, I don't know, did they violate the contract? Yeah, okay, here I come. Another big hour and a half. Be here or be nowhere. I'm giving out free copies of Mecca. Countdown to Mecca for July 4th coming up this weekend. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. This is how fast you can go. All right, that's enough. For, it's, it's beautiful, but you have to be sort of on PCP to enjoy it. <laughs> you have to be on some drug. I was once at a Greek festival in Marin County for one of the years. I forget, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. No, 30, because 20, I started radio. I stopped drinking like that. I went there on a Memorial Day, I think, whenever that a Greek festival, and I drank ouzo. I'd never had it in my life. It's made from pine sap. I got so drunk and so sick I won't even go in a pine forest after that. I can't even look at a pine a pine needle after that experience. How do they drink that stuff? Well, every culture makes booze out of their local f uh, 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 flora. You know, what's tequila made from, right? Agave. I mean, you work with what you have, man. If you got agave, you make liquor out of it. You know, you got pine needles, pine sap, you make booze out of it. You got wheat, you make booze. You got barley, you make booze. That's all. That's how it works. You ferment. You know who gave us fermentation, don't you? Who gave us fermentation? The Arabs. They don't even drink. That's the paradise. Isn't that weird? The Arab chemists gave us ferment. Excuse me, sorry. Arab, sorry. Arab chemists gave us distillation of alcohol, where they made very strong alcoholic distill, distillates. And they don't even drink. Isn't that weird? They never got anything out of them, as far as I can tell. But they drink behind the walls in, in Saudi Arabia. We all know that. I've known people who've gone there and work. The common people, no booze, no porno for you. But behind closed doors, are you kidding me? It's like uh, West Hollywood behind <laughs> it, Well, they're wearing the skirts anyway. I mean, they, they got the outfits on. They're doing what they want. What do you want to talk about? You feel like a, you feel like a hiatus in the show now, halfway through, one and a half hours into it. I feel good. I feel good. I feel good. Oh, local story. Remember a few months ago, I told you a story of a road rage case where a poor guy, a Dr. Simon, he was on a road in Marin County, a peaceful white suburb, and a schmuck pulled up uh, behind him or something, flashed a light. I don't know which way it happened. And, and he was driving his car a mile away from his house. His house. He's a senior citizen, by the way. He's 70 some odd years old. And another guy and he get into a road rage incident. The other schmuck follows him home all the way to his house, Dr. Simon, and Dr. Simon runs in the house with his wife. They're in their 70s, and this maniac is speeding, breaking up, breaking behind him, you hear? And gets to Simon's house, and then he smashes his car into the garage, tries to drive into the garage. 
but Dr. Simon closes the door on the hood of the vehicle. Dr. Simon then got out a 357 caliber handgun and fired at the schmuck, uh, striking him twice in the abdomen. So the vicious district attorney here, a psycho of the worst order, tries to throw the book at Dr. Simon. Remember we talked about that psycho DA here in Marin County? Well, he ruined Dr. Simon, but here's good news. He was cleared of all charges. The indictment was thrown out against this doctor in last year's road rage incident. James Simon, 71, was charged with attempted voluntary manslaughter by this psychotic DA here in, in the county. And the case was thrown out by a Marin County Superior Court judge threw the case out. Thank God. Simon's attorney, Charles Drezow, said his client acted in self-defense and he had a right to defend himself, his wife, and his home. But the guy's ruined. I mean, I drive by his house on a regular basis. He had to sell his house to defend himself because of this lawyer. The, the, the DA should be forced to make the payments for what he did to this guy. They should indict the DA for doing this to him. What, are they above the law, these people? What is he, a, he's got a robe on? Look what he did to this man defending himself. What a story this is. It's a sweet ruling, though. It means because if someone smashes a car into your garage in a road rage incident, you have a right to defend yourself, right? Some guy's in your house, basically. Well, he was theoretically outside the house. But he breached the gated area leading to the residence or the detached garage where Simon and his wife had secured themselves. Okay. Well, there it is. Final decision was the right one. The prosecution was a persecution by Marin County DA Ed Berberian, who should be ashamed of himself. He should be voted out of office for what he did to Dr. Simon because it makes all of us unable to defend ourselves. Berberian should not be permitted to be DA after this. It should never have gone beyond the first hearing. This is a left-wing fanatic, in my opinion, who did it simply to appease the fanatics in Marin County, California. Barbarian obtained an indictment against Simon uh, with assault with a deadly weapon and negligent discharge of a firearm. He knew in his heart of hearts this was a political decision. Terrible. Just terrible. Terrible. But okay, so Simon's free, but he lost probably everything he owned. The guy I mean, was a very good man. Just an update. Justice prevailed, but it won't prevail until the DA is voted out of office or thrown out by the citizens who want to protect themselves. Just one man's opinion. And now back to the national, international news right here on the Savage Nation. Here's some now, you know what the rats just did? The Supremes just said states can't force voters to prove citizenship. It's a victory for illegal aliens. It's a victory for the Ill illegitimate Democrat Party. End of story. It's over. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a slam dunk. They're there for big business only. The rest of the issues they could care less about. Over. Story over. End of story. Country over. Now move on. Country's over. Now move on. Now illegals can vote. You can't ask for uh, uh, any ID. Look what they just did to us, those bums. Look what they did. Thank you, Ronald Reagan, for giving us Justice Kennedy. Thanks, Ronnie, from the grave. From the bottom of my heart, Ronnie, thanks for giving it to us. Just happened a minute ago. Just, you didn't even hear it till now, huh? You just heard about it. The, the Supreme Court just stabbed America in the guts. They disemboweled us and threw, about, threw us out of a window. They just said states cannot require proof of citizenship for voting. Now, you tell me where they came up with that. Tell me how. Tell me how they can come up with a thing like that when we all know commonsensically that it's a fundamental duty of a nation to protect its voting rights. If you, prote if you don't protect your voting rights, then you have no, the vote has no meaning. You may as well send ballots to China. Unbelievable to me. Just came out a minute ago. What a group of desperados on that, on that court. And you'd expect it from a psychopath like uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was the former chief counsel for the ACLU, which should have disqualified her from the get-go, but Republicans are the ones who brought her on the court. Never forget it as long as I live. That woman is a fanatical, psychotic, left-wing nut. Never should have been entitled to be on Supreme Court because of her background. But the Republicans put her on because they were basically liberal, you know, liberals anyway. So, okay, you'd expect it from her. You'd expect it from Kagan, who in my day would have run a knish stand on, on Rivington Street. You'd expect it from the world's wisest Latina, who in my day the most she could have been was a Supreme Court justice. <laughs> Tricked you on that one. 
two geniuses. No one even knows what they ever wrote. No one knows what they what their opinions were in anything. Normally in the old days, a Supreme Court justice was picked because they had to distinguish themselves as lower court judges. They wrote opinions that would be remembered for decades, if not centuries, like Oliver Wendell Holmes, right? Or a thing like uh, Brandeis. They write things that were so brilliant they became Supreme Court justices. These two couldn't write a laundry ticket. That's all. They could write up a bill of fare, in my estimation. Is that embarrassing to anybody? I hope not. Probably a statement of fact. Picked, picked and invented out of whole cloth by Barack Obama to, to, to uh, stooge up the court. And Kennedy was picked by Ronald Reagan, by Edwin Meese. Kennedy was picked by Edwin Meese vetted by an alleged lawyer inside the Justice Department who's now a flaming conservative. Yeah, he, he's the Jesus. He's, he's the Jesus of the whole conservative movement. He's the Pope of the conservative movement. He knows who's a conservative and who isn't. It's like Santa Claus. He knows if you've been good or bad, so be good for goodness sake. Oh, the Pope of the conservative movement was actually the man who gave us Justice Kennedy. How does that work out? How does that work out? That's why my show has got to change. That's why it's got to change to what it always has been which is more fun, more middle of the road in the sense of I'm not going to eat my heart out every day over this. I'll tell you the news, but I'm going to burn you up with it. You can read it on the, the Drudge Report in three seconds. So why should I spend three hours on it every day when you can read it? When am I going to make believe I wrote the story? So I got to go back to the stuff I like, cars, food, clothing, medicine, whatever is interesting to me, philosophy, poetry, science, art, war, peace, love, death, burial i mean all of that stuff is all part of the human condition why shouldn't i talk about it where is it written that a talk show has to be about republicans democrats gays why do i care about it every second i just was on vacation you sit in an airport on southwest airlines you see the average person you could start breaking into tears you look at the average person at an airport getting on a, like a little small jet you want to start to cry for the human the human race you don't believe it could be this low it's like impossible for people to look this way, to be this misshapen and this ignorant. It's impossible. It's like, a, it's like function. I felt like I was on the IRT in the air, or the, uh, like a subway car in the air. That's all it is. Like a, thank God there was air conditioning on the plane. I remember the days of the subway in New York when there was no air conditioning with straw seats. <laughs> Would you believe that? I used to have to go to work in Manhattan on a subway car in the summer wearing a Brooks Brothers suit trying to look. I try to look white as, as white as I could. That's a joke. That's a joke. It's not a racist thing. We all try to look like we're admin, you know, like we were normal, like the cuffs were a certain. You know what I'm saying? You get a Brooks Brothers suit. You thought you'd move up in life. And still, I still crushed it on a subway like a sardine with a folded new. When I learned how to fold the New York Times on a subway car, I thought I was, I don't know, William F. Buckley Jr. I thought I had moved up in, in, in class. You could stand there with one arm on a strap and one arm holding a paper. Wow, you're really ahead of the game. So I was in L.A. for the week. Saw humanity at its worst. <laughs> you come back and you say, these people don't even know what happened in, never mind Tunisia. The day it happened, you look at it. How, do you know what happened in Tunisia? What? Tuna fish? Who? What? They don't know anything. Nothing. Then you know how Obama gets away with it. You look at people in an airport, you know how Obama became president. What more do you need to know? He knows it too. What, do you think they're stupid? The sorority knows how dumb people are. So that's how they get away with it. They don't even think you exist because you're, you're too small a number now. They have overridden you with welfare recipients and dummies. And it's just beginning now. He's got a lot of time left. What, a year and a half to flood America with as many as he can find all over the world. Bring him in. Bring him in. Bring him all in. Yeah, bring him all in. Change the nature of America. Put everyone uh, on notice. Read Boris Pasternak, Dr. Zhivago. You'll know what's coming. Remember Dr. Zhivago, Boris Pasternak? Great movie, Julie Andrews, Omar Sharif. Is about what the Bolshevik Revolution did in Russia. Most of you missed that story, the actual story. After the communists or Bolsheviks took over Russia, in addition to shooting people and putting the rest into slave labor camps, they went to the middle class, the bourgeoisie meaning you, and they said, let's see, you have a house with three bedrooms, but there's only two people, so we're going to put needy people who don't have a house in your house. And they put strangers into your house, and they put you in the basement, in the coal cellar, to get even with you because you had had it too good for too long. See, that was fairness to the Bolsheviks. And I once said that to a, I went to one party when I moved into a certain neighborhood in Marin County. Once I was around these people. And I said that to a couple living next door. I said, you got four bedrooms, you know, you're liberals, you know what that means, where this can lead? I explained Boris Pasternak, they didn't get it. 
They didn't understand where this was going. What do you think Section 8 housing is? Why do you think they're putting people that don't belong in these neighborhoods in these neighborhoods? In other words, what do you mean don't belong? If you can't afford it, you don't belong there. That's what I mean. That's what people do in life. You try to get away from people like yourself when you're poor. You don't want to live around them. Don't you spend your whole life trying to get away from people like yourself when you're poor? Of course you do. So you move up. Like when I was young, I lived in a, an apartment in the Bronx. The first thing my father did when he had a little money was move out of the Bronx to, to go to Queens into an attached house. Why? He wanted to get away from people like himself who were poor. So then he moved to an attached house, all he could afford. The minute he got some money, he tried to buy a dis detached house. He never got there. He died before he got there. But that's the whole point. That's how you do it. Poor people try to get away from poor people. They don't want to be around them. That's the whole society. That's the whole game of society. It's been the same way from the beginning of time. You don't want to live around people as poor as yourself. It's like the Groucho Marx joke. You know, I wouldn't belong to a club that would have me as a member. Same thing. So Obama says, well, that's not good enough. We're going to move poor people into you. Once you get yourself to the middle class, we're going to make sure it's no longer middle class. We'll put poor people around you again and subsidize them with government money. We'll go bankrupt. But it doesn't matter because that's fairness. Party on. Lock the doors. Seal them shut. Weld the door shut. We got Secret Service. We got NSA, DEA, DHS, MSNBC. We don't care what goes on outside our doors. Party on in the White House, says Prince Obama. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. The Supreme Court not only kicked America into the sp in the spiritual guts last week, not only trampled on every... God fearing person last week. They just did all the patriots in with another knife in our kidneys. SCOTUS tosses Arizona voter registration law, which means illegals can now vote in America without any ID. Now, why would a Supreme Court do that unless they're owned by the Obama administration? Unless they're lock, stock, and barrel, a, a, an extension of the illegitimate socialist regime that is ruining America. SCOTUS tosses Arizona voter. But this is a big deal. This is bigger than gay marriage. You want to know what will affect you more? This. This will affect America more than the gay marriage ruling, by the way. Not, requ not requiring voter ID? It's the basic premise of a voter. Are you a citizen or not? Well, if you're not, you can't vote here. So they've just undercut our sovereignty. Thank you, Ronald Reagan, for g giving us Justice Kennedy. The others we expected. I thank Ronald Reagan for this uh, poison pill that he gave us. Thank you, Edwin Meese. Thank you for doing this to us. Thank you for giving us Edwin Kennedy. Supreme say states can't force voters to prove citizenship. My God, it gets worse. I need a vacation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Country Joe in the Swish from the Vietnam era. Where is Country Joe in the Swish today? Where's uh, My Boots Are Made for Walking by Nancy Sinatra? That's the one I really liked. I wanted to play a little Vietnam era music on the Savage Nation because we're, we're, we're due for a civil war. Obama's not going to be happy unless he has one before he leaves. That's what it looks like to me. He owns the, 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 the dunces with the black robes, did it to us today like you can't believe. We read today that the U U.S. now has more Spanish speakers than Spain. Let me repeat that. We now have more Spanish speakers than Spain in the United States of America. And the black robes today tell us voter ID laws are illegal. They threw them out. So that's it. What's left to talk about? It's like each man is for himself. But hunker down. You know, go behind closed doors. But hunker down because you're finished. So that's why I went to the mystical. Second only to Mexico, the United States now has more Spanish speakers than Spain. 
I think it's in God's hands right now. Yeah, they gave us coal plants today. Supreme Court struck down Obama power plant regulations. Oh, that's good. We can just burn coal. All us conservatives are suddenly supposed to be happy. Wow, that's good, man. I like that coal. That's good stuff. We're supposed to go out and buy like a brick of coal tonight and put it on our dining room table and worship that. Yeah, man, I like that coal. It's not that green stuff. It's not like an electric car, coal-driven cars. That's what I want. I want that iron horse to come back. All right. And all you conservatives, let's see, after stabbing you in the heart with the uh, gay thing, let's see. Tell you what, we'll say that the uh, execution potion is okay. You can use that. You never saw that one? You can, uh, the, the thing they use in the, in the needle at executions is legal. Oh, that makes us conservatives great. Hey, you held up, you held up uh, executions. You held up uh, the death penalty. Good for you. Then the same day, Bingo, they give it to us again in the neck. They say, okay, forget about it. No voter ID laws. Then I wake up, Walmart nicks his cake with Confederate flag. Okay, is Islamic State cake. What, what, what country am I living in? Idaho City's ordinance tells pastors to marry gays or go to jail. Back in the Soviet Union now. Gays will cheer. Oh, yeah. As they start throwing pastors in prison, you'll see who'll cheer them. Next, they'll get the arena, the lions. Get the arena and the lions. Bring them in from Tunisia. Night in Tunisia. I like that song, Night in Tunisia, by... Do we have Night in Tunisia in the kit? It's one of my favorite songs, A Night in Tunisia, by... Um, I forget the jazz... Who remembers who did that one? Dizzy Gillespie, bingo. I would have given you a free copy of Count Down to Mecca. First day back from vacation. I'm, I'm rolling from this. I feel like I'm being punched left and right by the Supreme Court today. I never saw anything like this in my life. Never. I have never seen anything like this. How did the Supreme Court get so compromised so fast? How? How did this happen? How did it suddenly become a Belgian Supreme Court overnight? You got Night in Tunisia by Dizzy Gillespie. I'm throwing too much at poor Robert. He's got a new digital board to deal with, and he's got all sorts of things, the buttons to press. Mike Huckabee. Cause I like Huckabee more now. He's actually making good sense. Mike Huckabee says conservatives can ignore gay marriage ruling like Lincoln ignored Dred Scott. He's making some good points. Making some good. Bernie Sanders emerges as top Hillary Clinton challenger. Come on. It's a small poll of fanatics who go to see that creep. It's like a guy who looks like he owned this seltzer route in my day with a stained suit. Bernie Sanders is the type of guy who would be on a soapbox in Union Square when I was a kid, screaming from the Communist Manifesto about money and uh, capitalism. People would have gone and like eaten lunch, a sandwich to look at him and laughed at him. He's not getting anywhere. Forget about it. She'll crush him anyway. Hey, if he's a real threat, you think he's going to get out of the starting gate? Are you kidding me? They'll take him for a run around Marcy Park. That'll be the end of Bernie Sanders. He'll have a heart attack in his sleep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Watch out, Bernie. Run, baby, run. The other way. <laughs> hey, Bernie, I got some advice for you. Run, baby, run. The other way. <laughs> you're running too good. You're running too hot. You having a good time, Bernie? You having a time in your life? Be careful. You'll be in Marcy Park. Before you know it, you'll be running backwards in Marcy Park right off the cliff. Yes, indeedy. Life goes on. Follow the merry-go-round. This is the Savage Nation. 855-400-7282. This is amazing. One story after the other. Rock and roll. Lock and load, man. Look at these stories. It's impossible to keep up with them. What are they, stoned at the Supreme Court? What are they, on crack? The Supremes vote that the states can't use voter ID to prove citizenship? What Supreme Court would do that that was rational? None. That's a reflection that Obama owns Kennedy. Owns them. Owns them. It's as simple as they got something on them. It, it, it's simple as that. They got him. They got him pegged. They got him. That's it. They own him. They got him on tape. That's all. Unbelievable. Well, what do I do now? Back to mysticism. Back to mysticism I go. Started the show talking about God's hand. God's hand is really heavy on the left side. If it's all God's hand, man, his left hand's working real overtime. <laughs> right, Robert? I mean, if this is if I, I start the show by saying I, I delved into mysticism on my week off and well, that means God's left hand is heavier than his right. Maybe he had a stroke in his right hand. Maybe God had a stroke in his right hand. has no, no force left in it. I don't know. So I'm reading some of the mysticism 
from the Kabbalah, and I read this, the pull of the abyss. One does not have to be a mystic to want to transcend the prosaic and chaining demands of a you must do this, and the law says. Who has not felt at moments the pull of the demonic, the urge to break, to destroy, to taste freedom? Ecstatic, a word which literally means to leave the body, is a term frequently used to describe the mystic experience. Such leaving may indeed result in a vision of deeper truth, but it also involves a degree of disconnection with the world of common reality. The mystic may very well return to that world, but then again he may not. Do you know how many people are still walking around Berkeley, California, blowing bubbles in the street because their mind circuits were blown by LSD in the 1960s or by mushrooms? You, have, you know how many of them are still walking around? Well, not many because they're all working for Obama. They've all been made, made into community organizers. They're part of the sorority, Western Division. That's amazing. That's so You can become an anarchist by leaving your body and leaving your mind, and you can become a Democrat. Leave your, mod your body and your mind behind and work for uh, Obama and then Hillary, and you'll see what you get. So the world now is in a total state of balance. We in the West are sinking further and further into debauchery and degeneracy, losing all rooting in reality. Meanwhile, ISIS continues to rage, rape, murder, kidnap, and plunder their way across the Middle East, and no one stops them. How is that possible? Why would God permit this to happen if God's permitting it? Who's permitting it? Well, I told you the real. I'll take mysticism away from the picture for a minute. Because when I saw that victory parade of ISIS a month ago, after they took Ramadi, and that a half mile long victory parade of Toyota trucks with machine guns and not one rocket was fired by Obama's deballed military, I said, that's the story. You ask yourself, where's Israel in all this? Wagging the dog. Israel wants ISIS to prevail. Oh, come on. I saw that two weeks ago. I said that. I mean, still, I still love Israel compared to the people in the, the countries around them and what they do to treat people. But come on, Israel's behind this whole ISIS thing. I know it. If I never knew it before, I know it now because I read this morning that the IDF is actually, eh, they're supporting the, quote, rebels in Syria who are trying to topple Assad. So Israel's idiotic strategy so you think that Israel's that smart. This is not the Israel of Golda Meir and Maya, uh, Moshe Dayan. This is the Israel of the same types that we have running America. These are not thinking clearly. These are people not thinking clearly. This is the same generation of lightweights running Israel that are running America. So listen to what their strategy is. They're going to let ISIS rage. Why? Right. Why? Because ISIS will do their bidding by bringing down Assad. Now, why would Israel want Assad brought down? What do they gain by that? How do they gain by having ISIS take over an air force and nuclear stockpiles and, and chemical weapons? How do they gain? Can anyone explain it to me? Are the Israelis that stoned and stupid as, as the Obamaites? Are they that idiotic? Yeah. Yeah, same mindset. So it's all another charade that him and Netanyahu had a battle. Come on. So you're buying into that. Oh, he doesn't like Netanyahu. Netanyahu doesn't like him. He's bad to Israel. All one and the same. A seamless connection between Israel and the U.S. as far as I can tell. And they're both backing ISIS by not fighting them. I mean, you would think Israel would take out ISIS by now, right? They have the most powerful military in the Middle East. Have they fired a shot? No. Have they launched one cruise missile against ISIS? No. Have they launch, launched one sortie of uh, F-21s against uh, ISIS? No. Why? Why didn't Israel do that? Why are they letting the rape, kidnap, murder, blowing up monuments in Palmyra, which is one of the great travesties of our time? Remember I read to you about Palmyra two weeks ago? The pink stone that was... Uh, <clears throat> quarried out of Gaza and brought hundreds of miles to the interior of Syria to build these temples of pink stone in Palmyra, survived earthquakes, wars, survived World War II, but ISIS blew it up last week. The world should be ashamed of itself. The world is crying. There's a Holocaust going on. We're living through the second Holocaust and we're doing nothing. And we're celebrating with a White House that paints the white house in rainbow colors stabbing most traditional americans in the heart doesn't matter to me that obama supports gay marriage that's as right as an american but to turn the people's house into a front for such a small minority of people what in the world how could this be well as i say if i took it personally i wouldn't be able to take it so i take it very mystically and I hope you will too, and I'll be right back.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I'll be a transfusion tree in Palm Springs. Terrible what life does to people. Sexy boots. Everyone's screaming for the next thing you know, it's a walker, a wheelchair, a, a, a tree, a box. Making a choice between uh, this and that. I, I can picture scenes now. Many, many scenes come back to your mind, don't they? You think that America still can't fight a war, don't you? Many of you think that it can't, but you don't know what actually is. There are men on the front lines right now who are doing what was done going back to the Revolutionary War. Only you really don't know it. All you see is the rainbow flag in front of the White House as though that represents America. Maybe you should have put a military flag or maybe you should have put the 82nd Airborne flag on the White House one day. Maybe it would have made America happier to put the 101st Airborne flag on the White House. Maybe it would have been happier if we put the SEALs flag on the White House one day showing some patriotism, some spine, some love for America. But no, you're not going to get it from him. You know what you're going to get from him is what you're getting from him. So today it gets worse. What the Supremes did to you just now is worse than what they did last week. They said that states have no right to enforce voter ID laws. Now, how can anyone be in favor of that? How can any liberal think that having illegal aliens vote or illegitimate Americans who are not entitled to vote vote or having, having people vote five times vote? How can you left-wingers think this is good for America? What is wrong with your thinking? Who did it to you? Was it your mother? Did your father molest you that you became this way? Was it a neighbor, a teacher who molested your mind? Who did this to you? I don't know how anyone, even a liberal, can think that knocking out voter ID laws is good for America. Why would you want to turn your sovereignty over to China or, or, or Mexico? Why would you do that? How does that work for you? How can you celebrate a thing like this? What has happened to your mind, all of you left-wingers? Were your mind, were your circuits blown by too much LSD in the 60s? Did you do too much blow in the 80s? What happened to you? I keep asking. Are you that psychotic that you could celebrate a thing like this? This is so sick that only Bill Maher could su support it. This is so sick that only that guy whose name I always forget, the fake name guy with the hair, with the, I don't know his name. I always forget his name. The other one, the one from Forest Hills. I can't remember him. I don't remember his name. I try to. The one who... How could they celebrate this kind of insanity? They're going to cheer that the Supreme Court said no voter ID laws? How? What sane nation would do this? The answer is no sane nation would do it. The answer is we are an insane nation. It's an insane asylum run by a madman. And the Supreme Court now has five lunatics on it who are raping the country every day. Oh, yeah, they threw us coal this morning. He gave us fiscal conservatism, coal. You're allowed to use, you can burn coal. So slow down Elton Musk one, one second. Produce a few, a, a few or less rockets that explode. Make a few less electric cars on the government dole. But basically, you can still burn coal. Oh, that's grass. Let's celebrate coal? What's that to do with me? That's McConnell. McConnell got the coal. See, McConnell went along with Obama and everything on Obama trades. He got coal. You don't understand this works. Supremes are, they're bought out, man. The Supreme Court justices are owned. They're owned, man. They're told what to do. They gave coal because McConnell went with Obama. So the, the king went to them and told them how to do it. All right, go with the coal. Go with the conservatives on that one. Throw them a bone after the, uh, the uh, gay thing. They're freaking out. They're liable to start shooting. Give them coal. And what about the death penalty? Yeah, let them have the injection. Give them that. And then give them a, a, real, a real kick in the behind and tell them that uh, illegals can vote by the end of the day. We'll have them rocking and rolling by Wednesday. They'll be committing suicide by the thousands. That's your country. That's your country. That's what you did to yourself. Don't blame me. I'm the last man standing. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. We're living through strange times. The dance of death in the West. The actualities of death from the Islamists. Meanwhile, the prince entertains himself with a thousand sycophants in the White House partying on. 
locking himself behind closed walls as though the Islamist hand will not touch him. He thinks he's protected from this new plague. Let me explain something to you in my studies over the last week. I'll repeat what I learned, and it's not novel, nor is it original. We're facing a phenomenon that the West has not known since the wars of religion in the 16th and 17th century. Religious wars. When they ended in one place, they began in another. And they lasted for over 100 years. We have the same factors present right now. Did you hear me? We have religious wars right now. The, the Muslims are on the warpath. And they are against everyone else. They're against Muslims who are not as fanatical as them. They think they're going to take us back to a pristine time in human history, which is such rubbish it's beyond belief. When you consider they live like pigs after capturing eight-year-old girls and raping them and then say the Quran says it's okay. Don't tell me they're pure. They're not pure. They're phony killers, Nazis. Nazis wearing headscarves and quoting the Quran do not make them not Nazis. The atrocities are still atrocities. It's not a purity they're going to drag us back to. It's a barbarism the world has not seen in 1,200 years. It's a revolution that's going on. And we have a man in the White House who denies its existence. But make no mistake about it, whether he denies it or accepts it, it's, go it's ongoing. And as a brilliant man named Jonathan Sachs, I think he was once the chief rabbi of England, said in a recent speech, there is a difference between a starfish and a spider. A decapitated spider dies but a starfish can regenerate itself from a single amputated leg. Radical political Islam is a starfish, not a spider. And though Al-Qaeda and ISIS may be defeated, they will come back in other guises under other names. Why you would bring in Muslims who are not vetted into a nation at this time without vetting them down to their last strand of DNA is beyond me because many of them will radicalize if they're not radical before they get here. Only an insane prince would do this to us. But of course, it's not that he's so insane. He's stoned on the doxy of the progressive left. They're drunk on their progressivism. They think that they're going to enter a liberal utopia by continuing their march against all values, traditional and conservative. This is, of course, how past civilizations declined cut off, narcissists cut off, involved only in me, 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 and pleasure seeking, and they can't defend themselves at the end. They keep on partying. They keep on partying. So where does that leave us, we the people? It leaves us without a government. It's not a government at all. It's not a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. It's a government of power and force over all of us, not for all of us. It's a government of the lobbyists, by the lobbyists, and for the lobbyists. There were two Supreme Court rulings today, which are pretty interesting. They threw a bone to the fiscal conservatives, these wonderful, wonderful liberals on the Supreme Court, threw us a bone today, and they said, okay, the EPA overstepped, you can keep burning coal. So, oh, well, gave us gay marriage, Obamacare last week. Oh, but we can still burn coal this week, see? They said, okay, we're not that bad. Then they said the lethal injections that are being used, they're, they're legal. They can continue to use them. And then someone sends me an email about Edgar Allan Poe and his story, The Mask of the Red Death, 1842. And I said, holy God. I said, oh, my God, Edgar Allan Poe was writing about Obama. The Red Death had long devastated the country. No pestilence had ever been so fatal or so hideous. Blood was its avatar and its seal. There were sharp pains and sudden dizziness and then profuse bleeding at the pores. The scarlet stains upon the body, and especially upon the face of the victim, were the pest ban which shut him out from the aid and from the sympathy of his fellow men, and the whole seizure, progress, and termination of the disease were the incidents of half an hour. But the prince, Prospero, was happy and dauntless and sagacious. With his dominions, when his dominions were half depopulated, he summoned to his presence a thousand hale and light-hearted friends from among the knights and dames of his court, and with these retired to the deep seclusion of one of his castellated abbeys. This was an extensive and magnificent structure, the creation of the prince's own eccentric yet august taste. A strong and lofty wall girdled it in. The wall had gates of iron. The courtiers, having entered, brought furnaces and massy hammers and welded the bolts. They resolved to leave means neither of ingress or egress to the sudden impulses of despair or frenzy from within. 
With such precautions, the courtiers might bid defiance to contagion. The external world could take care of itself. In the meantime, it was folly to grieve or to think. The prince had provided all the appliances of pleasure. There were buffoons, there were improvisatory, there were ballet dancers, there were musicians, there was beauty, there was wine. All these insecurity were within. Without was the Red Death. If that does not describe the sorority and the little lighthearted fraternity around Obama, I'd like to know what does. There were buffoons, there were improvisatory, there were ballet dancers, there were musicians, there was beauty, there was wine. All these insecurity were within the walls. Without was the Red Death. Well, you know how this ends, don't you? It was toward the close of the fifth or six months of his seclusion, and while the pestilence raged most furiously abroad, that Prince Prospero entertained his thousand friends at a mask ball of the most unusual magnificence. Oh, did he entertain him? And I'm not going to read the entire a story, The Mask of the Red Death by Poe, 1842, but I will tell you how it ends. You want to know how it ends? You know how it ends, don't you? See, Obama thinks that all the troubles of the world can be pushed away because he owns NBC, which just attacked Donald Trump for speaking the truth. He owns ABC, he owns CBS, he owns CNN, he owns Fox News to about a 90th percentile. He has no opposition whatsoever except the churches and a few voices in the wilderness. And the prince locks himself in behind closed walls with his thousand friends, party on party on party on party. And he doesn't even think about the Christians who are being slaughtered. He doesn't think about the Azidi girls who are being raped and sold into slavery. He talks about slavery 150 years ago while slavery is going on right now and he does nothing. Doesn't lift a finger to the ongoing slavery. And so I say to myself, there's a story here that's both secular and religious. At least that's how I saw it. And it ends badly. It ends very badly for all of us. And it ends like this. And now is acknowledged the presence of the Red Death. He had come like a thief in the night, and one by one dropped the revelers in the blood-bedewed halls of their revel, and died each in this, the despairing posture of his fall. And the life of the ebony clock went out with that of the last of the gay, and the flames of the tripods expired, and darkness and decay in the Red Death held illimitable dominion over all. Let's hope this despairing image of the plague in that time is just a metaphor for this maddening prince in the White House who has created havoc around the globe. He has created havoc and he lights the White House in the rainbow colors and does nothing to stop the rapes and the murders, doesn't even mention them. And his little friends like Jake Tapperhead his little friends at ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, and Fox News barely mention the plague of murder, rape, kidnapping, slavery being enacted by the Islamists who continue their march, their march, their march, their march. Now that these justices declared that homosexual marriage is a fundamental right, and they say that anyone objects is a bigot, which demeans the human dignity of homosexual citizens, what does that mean for people of faith? How is that going to affect religious Americans? How will that affect houses of worship? Should radical gays threaten lawsuits when they're denied weddings? And that would be uh, mosques, churches, synagogues, Mormon temples. What will the mosque do when a gay couple tries them? They probably won't try them because they know they're too hard to deal with. They'll go for the Catholic Church. They've already been victorious there. What about religious colleges, adoption agencies, schools, healthcare facilities, where deeply held religious beliefs conflict with the so-called rights that these nine in black robes granted to homosexual couples? Tell me what will happen. We don't know what's going to happen. I think I know what's going to happen. I know pretty much what's going to happen, especially if we get a radical Democrat president like Hillary Clinton. I know just what's going to happen. You can look to China, where China cooperates with patriotic churches that are willing to work with its Communist Party and persecutes underground churches such as evangelical and Catholic churches that insist on their independence and the word of God. I know what's going to happen here. In Turkey, there's a two-tiered system of religion. The government funds Islamic education, builds new mosques with government funds, and restricts the activities of Christians. I know what's coming to America. This is government at its worst. The government at its worst. The Supreme Court has decisively rejected the U.S. Constitution 
and thrown our government into the business of managing our relationship with God, those of us who still believe in God. That's the opinion of most people of faith, not just mine. And we are now, on the other hand, facing a war, a religious war, as I said to you earlier, not known since the wars of religion in the 16th and 17th century. And they ended in a 100 years later, where these religious wars began in one place, they began in another, much like the pestilence that we see now in Tunisia the other day. You didn't even see that on Fox News. Couldn't find it. Martha Washington was busy talking about everything but that. She wouldn't touch, wouldn't touch it. To Fox News, the Islamist issue is, caught, is on a cordon sanitaire. Never mention it. They're much like Obama with, with that. And so it's a dangerous time. I kept trying to find pictures of the guy executing people on a beach with a machine gun. I couldn't believe this. And by the way, remember after that terrible tragedy in South Carolina when that lunatic coward shot up those black people? And Obama had the audacity of lies to get up there and say, this happens only in America, it doesn't happen in Europe. Duh. He forgot about the uh, Hebdo massacre where Jews and others were assassinated by Muslim fanatics. It happened there and they have gun control. It didn't happen in Tunisia last week where they have severe gun control. How'd that happen, Mr. Obama? I guess the sorority didn't report on that to you. You were too busy partying on at the ball. Did you even know what happened in Tunisia, Mr. Obama? Or were you busy looking at the presents that your wife brought back from her shopping trip to Italy, Mr. Obama? Do you know what's going on in the Middle East, Mr. Obama? Do you know about eight-year-old girls who are being kidnapped because they're not Muslims and sold off as slaves, Mr. Obama? Do you know that's even happening? Or are you planning another party tonight in the White House? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from, SwissAmerica.com. I got to go back again to saying to you that as the West dies and falls into deeper degeneracy, if you want to call it that, I don't know what else to call it, pardon me, it's how I was raised, uh, I haven't been re-educated, as we sink further and further into debauchery and lose all of our connection to reality, the Islamists continue to march on. And so I say to you, there's some mystical element going on here. There's a balance here. There's a balance. There's God's hand involved in all of it. So many Christians think these are signs of end times. I called a mystical Jewish rabbi. Not all rabbis are mystical. Most of them are not. Most of them are just schmendricks. Most rabbis that I've met, the liberal kind, are basically comedians who couldn't get a job in a comedy club. My, my experience they think their job as a rabbi is to tell jokes on Friday night and sell bagels and locks on the side or hummus now to whatever they sell and not, not even reference God because it's an embarrassment to the congregation. That's a reformed temple today. So I called a uh, mystical rabbi and I said to him, you know, many Christians think that these are end times. He immediately said no to the Jewish mind. These are the beginning times. We don't see it at the end of times. He said, we see mystically these are the beginning of times. This is God's way of telling us there's a new beginning emerging that people will awaken to what's going on and it will be a new beginning for man on earth. So I said, that's interesting. I'm, I'm gonna learn more from him perhaps next weekend. They're sending down a real heavyweight from somewhere to meet with me because I wanna talk about this. It's not like we sit with some crystal ball or anything, but I wanna hear what they have to say from their point of view. How do they live in a time like this? I'm gonna talk about God then. You want me to talk about God? Since I'm talking about mysticism, I'll tell it to you over and over again. My career ended before it began and then it took off like a rocket. And then I was put through a trial and tribulation with one of the worst people on the planet, went on for years, tortured, persecuted, threatened. Day in and day out, no one knew what I was living with. Nobody knew what I lived with. Another man would have left and said, enough is enough, I don't need this garbage. But I had a bigger mission, I ignored the evil that was doing it to me. And then when I thought the career was over, the Red Sea parted for me, and the sea of cumulus opened to me overnight, out of nowhere, and... I had to walk on hot coals for a year. You don't know that either. I was given a night show. You remember my night show? You know how hard that was for me, that adjustment? It was walking on hot coals. I didn't think I could survive it. It threw my life upside down, but I wanted to do it. I had to do it. It was a mission. And I waited and waited and waited for what I have now, which are the biggest stations in the country during drive time on the East Coast, reaching more people than I ever reached in my life with my simple message. And I believe that there's a, a reason for it. And the reason is for me and you to talk on a daily basis. 
And that's the thing I'm trying to tell you. There's some kind of thing going on here that goes beyond humanity and just human beings. So there it is. What about Greece? What about Puerto Rico? What about gay marriage? Uh, what about the two Supreme Court rulings today that you missed that I told you about? You heard about them? They gave us the needle and they gave us the coal. They threw it at us. They said, oh, good for you. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, you don't like the gay marriage thing. I'll tell you what, you right-wing nuts. We're going to give you, you could have all the coal you want. And if that's not good enough for you to show that we're not that bad, we're going to throw in the needle. You're allowed to execute people with that concoction that the liberal fanatics say is, is cruel and unusual punishment. Go ahead, take a walk, move on, forget the gay marriage already. The politicians in black robes, the, four, the, the libs, the five libs. Of course, there's a 4-4, four, four, and then there's one split guy who was appointed by Ronald Reagan, the great, the great hero, Kennedy. The, the great hero, Ronald Reagan, the gene. Did, could do no wrong. What's wrong with people? They put Ronald Reagan on a, on a pedestal. I don't understand it. How did they come to, un, to believe that Ronald Reagan is, was God, chosen by God to be president? Where did they come up with that rubbish? I mean, he, did, he used to do 20 Mule Team Borax. I remember that show as a kid. Nice actor. A reasonably decent president. Good speaker, good writer. He gave us Justice Kennedy, along with Edwin Meese and the little lawyers who worked for Edwin Meese, who now pose as talk show hosts. They used to work as bull weevils inside the uh, Justice Department. Gave us uh, Kennedy, and I was supposed to believe now that they're really conservative. They know who he was. Oh, he lied. He didn't lie. He always was what he is. The whole thing is a game. It's all a charade. A one-party system, all ganged up against the people. It's that simple.